Hi, I'm Dave Jones from Maverick Diagnostics, and today we're going to cover the Ford Dealer Diagnostic Tool. I'm going to show you briefly how to purchase your software subscription, and we're going to do a quick run through of the software using Ford FDRS application and this trusty Ford Transit Connect. By the end of this video, you'll hopefully have a great understanding of the Ford FDRS dealer diagnostic software. You'll have some good ideas of how to navigate and some shortcuts, how the menu is driven, and more importantly, the functionality that you're gonna get with using just genuine dealer diagnostic software. So we're gonna do some basic run through first. We've got our USB connection, which comes from the VCM straight into our laptop. That will set up automatically itself. And then there's an option then for setting up the Wi-Fi. So we're just gonna put this on the Wi-Fi network so you've got that flexibility. But of course, the first thing we need to do is we need to put some firmware on the device. It's a brand new unit, so we're gonna flash some firmware. So let's start with the update. This typically takes around about two to three minutes. So it's really important at this stage that we wait to hear the device make that beep. Once the device has made the beep, then we're good to go. So we simply click OK, and you can see now we're seeing the VCI with its serial number and it's on a USB connection. What we now need to do is we need to provide power source down the OBD socket and we need to connect the tool. So we simply select and connect, and then we're good to go into our network setup. So into our network setup, we're going to be looking for a, a wireless networks. This should display all of your Wi-Fi networks within your area. Once we've found it, we simply configure. You'll hit your put your Wi-Fi password in, click next and save your Wi-Fi password. The device now should be taken on board the Wi-Fi network settings and password. And we can see now here with our signal strength that we are now connected on Wi-Fi. And once we do a quick refresh of the screen, we can now see that we're connected on Wi-Fi. We can check that it's connected by hitting the connect button. We can page the VCI. If it's successful, you'll hear the device make a beep. So we're good to go now to connect to the vehicle. Now we've done our VCI setup and we're ready to do our diagnostic connection on the vehicle and start to work, we first of all need to purchase our subscription through the Ford Service Info portal. We need to select our country and our language. And at this point, if you haven't created an account, it's worth noting that you need to click on the new to Ford Service Info and register today. We've already done that. We simply just need to log in and purchase the subscription that we require. So once we're logged into our account, we can simply go to the pricing information under the site features. And here we'll show you all of your subscriptions that are available for UK users. So we've got our, our subscription for the FDRS and the technical information starting at £15.79 all the way through to our yearly subscription at £3,470. And of course you've got varying options in between monthlies, weeklies and dailies. There is a security accreditation application fee as well, a one-off fee, up to three employees and that's for £263. There's a hotline minute as well, so Ford will provide uh, technical support for you and they charge their hotlines at £1.58 per minute. So we'll go ahead and purchase just a one hour subscription for the purpose of this demonstration. We'll add that to our cart, but before we do that, it's worth just noting on here some of the notes of the charges, what you're actually going to receive when you purchase your subscription. So you're gonna get access to mechanical repairs, that includes repair procedures, diagnostic information, also includes any uh, body mechanical information, your labour times, your wiring diagrams, and really importantly as well, your technical and service bulletins. So it's always good to check on your technical service bulletins to see if there's something that affects the vehicle before you start to work. We've now purchased a one hour subscription. We can double check that and make sure that we've got what we require by clicking on the My Subscriptions tab. 
And in the My Subscriptions tab, what we should see then is our Get License Code. We're going to now need to get the license key from this to put into our software before we can start our diagnosis. So we're going to obtain the license key. Here's the license key here in the middle. So we'll need to copy and paste that before we can put that into our FDRS software. Okay, so we've got our subscription, we've got our code, we need to input that now into our FDRS software. But really importantly, what we need to do is we need to make sure we're selecting the correct user type for our account. So of course we're an independent operator. So we'll go ahead and add our license key. That's automatically copy and pasted it from our portal. We go continue and what we'll see here is the license key go from red to green. We then select the independent operator. We select really important our country that we're operating in. So the UK, we hit login and now it's ready to take our same user details that we've just used to purchase our subscription. We've got to make our selection now of the VCI that we're using and more importantly, whether we're on a wired or wireless connection. So because we've made a wireless connection, that's where we're gonna proceed and go with. You can see the different other options here. We've got the VCMM for the full kit that's used in the dealership. We have the brand new VCM3, which is for sale through our website. Uh, but the purpose of the demonstration, we're just using our trusty old VCM2. Here it is on the Wi-Fi network. We connect and we know we're connected because we've got the little symbols down the bottom right hand corner along with our device serial number. So we're now ready to read the vehicle VIN number. We've got a good battery voltage. So we're obviously maintained there above the 12 volt threshold. We read the VIN from the vehicle and upon successfully reading it, it's then populated within the box. We're good then to go and proceed. So now we're gonna download some vehicle information from the Ford main server. Once we've done that, then of course, then the software is going to get to work with identification of the ECUs that are fitted to the vehicle. And hopefully we should get what the modules are that are fitted and more importantly, whether there are any fault codes. As you can see from the software, it's nice, it's informative, it's very color coded and coordinated. So again, we've got our little tree up here of all the different colors and what those corresponding colors are. So again, great for reference to go back to. Uh, on the top right hand corner here, again, we've got all our connections, our printing options, and our, all of our setting options. So in the settings menu here, so we've got, our, um, we've got our network settings, our user settings. So it's worth pointing out that, you know, for, for those of us that are on uh, Imperial rather than metric, great knowing that you can actually mix up those um, live data views. So you, you can get those viewing in whatever, whatever your preference is. So you can see it's identified the vehicle. We've got the vehicle details here now on the right hand side. So we've got our body style, our engine, transmission, and a few basic bits of information about the vehicle. But more importantly, what we've got here now are the ECUs that we have communicated with, and of course, whether they're free from errors or whether they've got some form of continuous DTCs within them. So you can see straight away here, we have two here that are a different color, which are denoting that we have got some DTCs present. So what we'll go do now is we'll go ahead now and we'll view those DTCs. There's a couple of different ways we can do this. One is we can click on the, the tab here at the top of the column, or alternatively, we can go down here on the bottom right hand corner and ask it to view all the DTCs from here. You can see now we've got an additional tab across the top of the software, which is our self test, which is showing our DTCs now. Uh, alternatively, we can go back to our toolbox, our main menu that we've just been in, and also the vehicle identification screen. So this is where we started from. The toolbox then we'll come back to in a few, in, in a few seconds, because that's where we're gonna be mainly controlling the software from. But you can see it's starting to add and build up these additional layers on top. So we're in our DTC screen. We can see now the modules that have passed successfully, no DTCs. More importantly, the ECUs with faults. And of course, then we have our fault code and a brief description of the fault here. All right, we have some as well, some basic information. Uh, so the time since the last DTC was first set. Two important buttons within the software that generally get overlooked. And that is for people like myself with really poor eyesight, you've got the ability to zoom in and zoom out and make this text larger or smaller as you see fit. All right, so feel free 
increase or decrease that size till what's comfortable for you. It's really quite um, overlooked couple of little icons that within the software. You also have the ability to hide any uh, permanent DTCs or hide any faults that have passed. So if we click this little box here, we'll see that suddenly all those ECUs without faults have now disappeared. So now we're just looking specifically, importantly, at the ECUs with errors and those error codes. So it's a nice easy way of getting rid of all of the unnecessary ECUs that have no faults in. Because we're really interested in getting to the faults and getting down to what those descriptions are and working through them. So that's the DTC side of the software. We'll flick now back into the toolbox, which is where we con most of our software controlling is done. From here, again, we've got this little lovely tree, again, of the ECUs that are fitted. And of course, that really nice color coding um, between the DTCs present and not present. But more importantly, now we have our main menu here on the right hand side. What we've got is, again, we've got a list of tabs going across the page. So we've got all, which is there to show us all features, all functions, all tabs, all ECUs. So if we started to scroll down here, you'll see that some of these configurations and alterations are categorized into the PCM and the ABS, et cetera, et cetera. So it could be on a modern vehicle, quite a really, really long list. The best way to get around that and to view just what you need in the ECU is, you can select just the ECU from this left hand column. So if you know that you want to do some injector coding, for example, all right, you could quite easily click in the powertrain control module because that's where we'd expect that to be. And suddenly that list you'll see has got a lot smaller and now we're just looking at features that are in the PCM. It's very easy to filter back. Again, we can just click on relevant other ECUs. We've got these little stars in this column here as well. So that denotes any favorites. So again, if you're running procedures that are really quite common, then you can actually mark and store those as a favorite. So a good favorite would probably be a speed limiter. So a lot of customers and uh, companies out there that do speed limit adjustments, you could save that as a favorite. And it's quite easily done just by clicking on what it is that you want. And that just marks it within the software. What that does then is that shows all everything you've marked as a favorite in your favorites column. We'll go back to viewing it all. Again, if, if it's not a favorite any longer, simply click again and that'll remove from your favorites column. It is worth noting as well that some of these have uh, an internet icon. So that denotes obviously that you need to have a good internet connection to be able to run these specific actuations and specific features within the software. Anything without, then you're good to go, doesn't actually require that internet connection. And again, that's backed up by the offline tab. All right, so click the offline tab, all those disappear that require an online. The next tab along is the multi-mode uh, module tab. So this is a great tab for anything that's required to connect and communicate with more than one in CU. So in the multi-module mode, you'll generally find the self-test, which we're already in. So you can see it's already saying stop because we're already still in that tab. If we did click stop here, that would come out and that would go green and that would then enable us to run it again from this main menu. All right, so again, self-test because it communicates with all ECUs. Data logger, which again is your viewing of live data because you can select different modules within the vehicle. That's also within the multi-module. Then we move on to a really, really important tab that a lot of customers really buy the genuine dealer diagnostic tools for, and that's our software updates tab. Now, the Ford software is really, really quite cool in the way it behaves because you will only see in here any software updates that actually affect the vehicle and specific. Because in the main menu, it's already, in the vehicle identification, it's already gathered those really important software and part numbers that it needs to check against the Ford server. So if there are updates, when you're in the toolbox and you're in the software update, if there is a software update for the vehicle, it will be listed here. If there's nothing listed in this column, so we can see we've only got the IPC listed here, there's only a software update applicable for this vehicle for the instrument cluster. 
So there's no engine updates to be done, there's no ABS, there's no body control. All right, really important that the reason you're not seeing them is because they're already up to date on the latest versions of software. So don't be confused by thinking, I can't update my engine ECU, why? Next tab along is our programmable features. Again, a tab that's not really used very often within the software. And then we have our guided routines. So anything that there that Ford is saying that you have to run a, a specific guided procedure for. Now, those of you that are watching the video might say, well, I fitted a new ECU. I don't want to do a software update on an existing ECU. That's fine. That's not a problem. If you go back to all modules, if you actually filter either by the module here on the left or the search option up here at the top, you'll actually find something down the list called PMI. So if I just search on here for PMI, which stands for Program Module Installation, you will see here all of the ECUs fitted to the vehicle that we can now start to fit a brand new module to the vehicle. So we're starting from scratch, uh, we're fitted a new module, and now we're programming it from scratch. Very, very easy to do. You simply select the one you want, you download that software to the tester, once it's downloaded, you then hit run and it will guide you through the process then to fit in and program in that ECU. It is worth noting some ECUs will want to take information from the old unit. So please start with the old unit on first. All right. And then if it needs to gather information, you can do. Don't worry if you've not got the old unit. However, it can get main details from the main server. Thanks for watching this video. Hopefully you've got a great understanding now of the Ford FDRS software and you're keen and eager to get your hands on the tool and make some real money yourself in the workshop. You may have some additional questions or need additional support, then feel free to give our technical sales team a call. We have a designated support team staff for all your issues and problems, should you run into any, and get on that website, www.maverickdiagnostics.com.